following presentation is rated PG and may contain coarse language and mature themes. Viewer discretion is advised. My name is Naguset. This week we're featuring Ernest Webb, a filmmaker and an artist. Also, we have Gutnya Dio Horn, an actress from Konawage, as well as aspiring filmmaker Carolyn Monet. And this is Indigenous Power. <laughs> My name is Ganyeh Dio Horn. I'm Mohawk from Gohnawage. I'm an actress, filmmaker, writer, director. What, what does your name mean? Uh, Ganyeh Dio means nice snow. Wow. Well, beautiful. I just say beautiful snow. It's nice snow. It's like good snow, but I say beautiful snow. When did you want to become an actress? Is that what you first wanted to do? Or was it a writer first? or? I think I, when I was in elementary school and they were doing plays at school, so I started doing the plays. And then I saw Ace Ventura. Okay. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, I never realized, you know, that being... That, that acting was a profession until I saw that movie and I was like, this guy makes people laugh and he's paid to do that for a living. That's amazing. So I guess it was like weird because the first thing that I was cast in um, right out of theater school was uh, the CBC thing called um, the, uh, Indian Summer and it was about the Oka crisis okay. in 1990, which was, which actually is like a huge part of my like childhood because mm -hmm. I was there with my sister and my mother behind the lines in Ganesadage. So it was kind of interesting that that was the very first thing that I ever uh, worked on. Like it was just kind of like... Surreal? Just weird. Yeah, just weird. So I mean I didn't have very much to do. I was just sort of always there. So um, being... So that first experience on set, I think I had 13 or 14 days and it was basically like my training on you know just like learning about maneuvering as an actor around set like find like simple like things that you know nobody really teaches you like finding your light or finding your mark or you know how to do eye lines and stuff like that so that i kind of like learned and just like everybody's job on set mm -hmm. and i don't know i think i have like maybe 40 credits now on my resume just sort of like all over the board Whatever I do, you have to hold me under. I will be fine. Even if it doesn't look that way. You promise me? Yeah. But you're not typically um, cast as an Aboriginal yeah. actress. No. I guess I found, okay. like, I remember when I, my agent, who has been with me since right before I graduated uh, theater school, um, we were like, well, I'm not gonna get cast as a native person obviously you know when I graduated and then the first thing I get on is the Oka <laughs> crisis thing and then uh, there was like a couple more projects that I was involved in that I was like Jeff Barnaby's uh, short film The Colony mm -hmm. I don't know where it all went wrong 
I just woke up one day next to this dead little man. The way you are now. And I got pregnant. And I knew it couldn't be yours, but I always wanted babies. Like, I was surprised. I was like, really, you're casting me? Like, I had, like, long, like, red hair, you know, super pale. I don't look, obviously, what everybody else wants me to look like. I don't look like, yeah, the stereotypical, typ stereotypical mm -hmm. native person. Spared! I've been having nightmares, running through the fields to this old house with hair and teeth growing out of it. OK. OK. Listen up, you fucking nut. I want you out of here. It's been real nice playing house and everything, but you're way too fucking crazy for me. Can you tell me about the project that you created yourself as opposed to being an actress? You said you directed or produced the film? Oh, yeah, when I was in LA during pilot season, maybe five years ago. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, I was just so tired of all of the things that I was auditioning for and liking maybe like one out of mm -hmm. 15 scripts, basically, it felt like. And um, the, a lot of the roles and stuff. I guess I was at like also an age where I'm like, it, I was in my early 20s and I, was, I could still sometimes go for the late teen roles, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of really terrible late teen roles, you know? So um, I remember being in my apartment and I was like, I'm so tired of this. So I always thought it would be really funny to um, do something about a cigarette store. A lot of my, you know, late teens and early 20s, I've worked in a cigarette store, which is because we sell cigarettes on my reserve and there are little smoke shacks all up and down the highways and on the reserve. It's just a part of the industry there and the economy. And it's just a really silly place, just different, like a very different little corner pocket of, of the world that nobody else really knows or has or has experienced. So I decided to uh, write a short film about that, just like a sketch almost. Like, and I was going to even film it just to do something, just to do something. That's it. To be or not to be. If music be the food of love, play on. E, O, O, hot pot of coffee, hot pot of coffee. I play myself, okay. like play a girl, and uh, I play a French person, a French customer, what? man. That's crazy. <laughs> and then I play, I play like a guy from Kahnawake, or a guy from the res, whatever. Oh my God. Yeah. Lunch or supper time is super exciting. Because you get to order food. Chicken breast special with, um, can you change a fry to a large poutine and can I have extra gravy? Mm. Well, so it was really nice just because um, the theater school that I went to, we like we also learned how to build sets and how to okay. you know work with sound and how to you know sort of an appreciation for all the technical aspects that mm -hmm. go into um, that go into this whole business and so it was nice to be able to do something and play another part other than other than just actor you know I mean I did like catering I did oh my um, gosh. well I'm you know like I made sure everybody was fed I um, I did costume props somebody else did makeup but I did hair, I think. Um, so it was nice because I just, I felt like I, all those skills and, you know, be, being able to be part of something and not just have one role and not, and, and totally be happy doing all of the other. I loved mm -hmm. the stress of it. I mean, it was stressful, but it was really, really fun, you know? So I did that and I won a couple of awards for it. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Won, uh, best comedy short at, um, the Yorkton Film Festival. And Where do you see yourself in five years or ten years in the future? In five years, I hope to be making that movie or okay. like getting, you know, millions of dollars to make that movie. Y'all heard that? She wants millions, millions of, of dollars. dollars. Send it to her. Well, I would love to do it, you know, like, like have the right funds and the right mm -hmm. people involved, you know. 
you don't always have to have a mission. You can just do something because you want to do it. Like, I don't want to... I'm not trying to change the world mm -hmm. with the films that I, I make, but if I can make some people laugh or, you know, like, I don't have a, an agenda behind everything. Don't let it define you, like, who you are. Like, I'm not just an actress, I'm so much more. Mm -hmm. There's so many more things that I am and so many more things that I want to do and I want to... Um, and do it for the right reasons and make sure you know what those reasons are. community called Chisasibi. Okay. Used to be Fort George, but we moved the town due to um, the dams that they built on our river. And so that's where I grew up. And in 87, summer of 87 is when I moved to town here in Montreal. Okay. When I told people I'm going up north, I'm going home, I'm going up north, they would say, oh, are you going to Trambla? There's this whole world out there that's, be, like, that's beyond, beyond here, mm -hmm. beyond downtown Montreal. Mm -hmm. Even across the river, if you go to Ganawagi, it's a whole other world. Mm -hmm. But mind you, I'm pretty happy and grateful to be living in a city like Montreal. It's the best city in the world. And then I worked at CBC North. I started okay. working at CBC North, and, and then it had as I said, it was just a natural progression. We were broadcasting to the people up north as well in the Cree language. And so working at, the C at CBC North, it opened my eyes to what's going on out in the world. Even for me, I took our language for granted. You know, like I discovered that not everybody speaks their language. Um, there's people that are displaced, you know, because of uh, various developments on mm -hmm. their land. Mm -hmm. When I left CBC North, we started up the magazine. Which was what we, the magazine? We call it The Nation, okay. and we serve the James Bay people. After starting the magazine, we moved on to doing films. And so in 2000 was when my wife and I started up Resolution Pictures. This is the Rupert River, celebrated as one of the most spectacular free-flowing rivers left on Earth. For generations, it's been essential to the survival of my people. The river sustains us. It's in our blood. But our greatest resource is our people. I'm on a journey the full length of the Rupert River, meeting the people that define our story of resilience and hope. We also have um, a company called Minority Media as well. Um, that's crazy. And we do video games. films, I would love to do a feature film based on our legends. And so I would love to be able to put together a saga, like a whole, almost like condensing, because there's a whole series of legends that we have, which were told in the, um, the, the cold winter nights, okay. you know, because days are, they, the days are pretty short up north. Mm -hmm. And so, traditionally, they were only told in the, in the wintertime. Okay. And so, and so they've been passed down from generation, from countless generations. And so they deal with a lot of issues. Um, they deal with uh, social issues. Mm -hmm. They deal with uh, wrongs that were done to mm -hmm. people and how 
revenge was taken oh, really? or justice okay. was sought, you know. And there's a lot of anamorphic uh, characters in those legends as well. You have humans that turn into these animals, mm -hmm. or you have humans marrying caribou woman or something like okay. that, you know. And so it opens up this whole world, the, this whole world of possibility. My name is Caroline uh, Monet, and um, I'm uh, Algonquin. My mom is Algonquin, and my dad is French, and I live in Montreal. I'm a multidisciplinary artist that uh, often works in film and video, but also in visual arts, painting, sculpture. And uh, right now, these days, I've been working a lot in uh, cinema and um, working on this project that's been taking a lot of my time. Um, it's a film commissioned by the Imaginative uh, Film Festival awesome. in Toronto. And uh, I'm part of this embargo collective where we're five women filmmakers that challenge each other to step outside of our comfort zone for the next film that we will make. Um, I don't necessarily make films with indigenous content just okay. because it has to be uh, screen at an indigenous festival or okay. because I'm indigenous. Okay. Um, I think exactly without necessarily uh, putting indigenous content, I can still contribute to, to um, uh, native cinema or uh, without really pointing the finger on cultural references, it still contributes to, to native cinema. And I think that's a really important thing, especially today where we move away a little bit from um, stereotypical stories or images of mm -hmm. Native people, and now we just express ourselves as Native people, and I think that's the difference. I applied through the Winnipeg Film Group in Winnipeg uh, to do a first film, which I had uh, full creative liberty to do whatever I wanted, okay. and I did the first film in 2009 uh, titled Ikwe, which means, means a woman in the Algonquin language. Okay. Je ferme les yeux et libère mon esprit. Les murmures de la lune me dictent les coutumes. And that film, uh, I really enjoyed the process. And the film uh, traveled to festivals, got uh, recognition. Wow. So it really encouraged me to keep going with that. Okay. And I kind of dropped out of school to, okay. to keep making films. And I mean, it just uh, projects after projects. Uh, I've been learning how to craft uh, films and, and just be involved with it and every aspects of it, vi uh, camera, editing, sound. Uh, and uh, except for this uh, imaginative film that I'm working on, usually I, I pretty much do everything on the film and I kind of wear many hats and, and like to, to have control on, on the experimentation. I like the, the process of making a film. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many films have you done so far? Uh, I've done about uh, uh, f five films. In four years or since, In, 2000? since 2009? The schooling is really behind city curriculum. My mom didn't want that for me, so I came to Winnipeg. I haven't been home in a year. Where do you see your future in film? Well, right now it's a bit, uh, it's a bit complicated to, to really know what my future is going to look like because I've really enjoyed fiction mm -hmm. and I think there's uh, many possibilities with fiction okay. and having actors uh, do what you tell them to do or to write a story uh, to, and to especially have a crew to help you mm -hmm. achieve that, that vision or that story. That's, that's something that really interests me and I see where I could go with that and where I could uh, bridge the experimental uh, form that I like and bridge it with the, the fiction and trying to, to kind of 
put them together and create a new kind of uh, cinema or a new kind of way of crafting things. I always thought that, you know, to get into this industry you have to go to school and you have to study and you're telling me that you were able to find just through your arts. So do you have any, um, any, yeah. any words of wisdom or any words of experience? In my case, uh, I learn by doing mm -hmm. and I think that's the most important advice I can give to anybody is just do it. If you have an idea, don't wait for an opportunity to do it or don't wait for it to come to you. Just just go out and, and film, use a camera. Today it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Everybody has uh, cell phones, cameras. Mm -hmm. we, we all know people that have an editing software. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really easy to, to just make it happen and then learn how to, to get better at it, submit to festivals. And you never know, you might have a brilliant film in your hands and then get recognition and be able to apply for, for money to make a bigger project. And it just uh, adds and adds and adds. And Thank you for watching this week's episode of Indigenous Power. See you next time. Oh,